Hello, everybody, and happy Saturday. Welcome to Movie Couple Live. I'm Wendy. I'm Dustin. And today we have a very special guest. You may know her from Rotten Tomatoes, Movie Fung. She's a host. She is a film critic. She is an amazing friend, cosplayer. She is Grey Drake, everybody. Woo! Woo! The crowd goes wild. Hey! I'm so excited to be here. Look, I'm doing this dance, the cabbage yeah, patch. Yeah, we'll, we'll join. We'll join. The Wait, cabbage so patch. <laughs> really terrible and i just i just did that on the internet you're welcome everybody <laughs> fun fact i could never do the roger rabbit growing up what is the roger rabbit is that's that the one that's the one that you offer? it's like it's okay i can't do it either i just look like i tried doing it once my mom's like are you having like <laughs> Are you having a moment? And I was like, it's the, it's the, it's the kids are doing it. And she's like, <laughs> the kids. Yeah, and, then the what kids they are. Look like. and you're doing it. And, and you're like, no, please, please call the hospital. 911 <laughs> immediately. <laughs> like not, you don't have to do everything that everyone else does. AKA you, you, you're bad at it. It's just stop. <laughs> I'm so happy you have the time to come and hang out with us and our movie bunch, aka our viewers. So um before we kind of jump into our really like super random topics that I found for today, can you tell everybody just a little bit of your line of work and what it ha what's like the latest with you? Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so I am like when I was a young child, no, I'm just kidding. I won't go back that far. But um, I found memory. <laughs> hmm. Um, I basically have spent the last handful of years of my life realizing that like celebrities, they're just like us. And I started to get the opportunity to actually speak to them directly. And so my interview, my love of interviews has really taken hold. And also I'm super nosy, like super nosy. And I have something to say about everything. So um, I, when I worked for Rotten Tomatoes, I, I, was, I, I started to build their video content department and do all kinds of cool stuff over there. I did the same thing when I was briefly Ms. Movie Phone. Um, look for season two, maybe sometime ever uh, we don't know um it's fine and so in the meantime i realized that uh you know just because we're in the middle of like a co completely paradigm shifting world right now and everything is weird uh i have never put effort into sp putting content on my own social media channels because literally contractually i could not <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now okay. it's kind of like now you have this freedom to be like, hey, I can do what I want to do. Yeah, exactly. And so now that I'm experiencing kind of like an upswing, because you know how through this whole process, there's been like real ups and downs that are very unpredictable, mm -hmm. just because everything is a mess. Uh, I decided to seize the upswing and be like, I'm still getting invites to speak to filmmakers and actors. And I should just put them on my own YouTube channel and I should just like focus on me and do what Instagram <laughs> is telling me to. Well, that's going to be great too. Cause when you have people that are like, you know what? We don't care where you're working. We just want you. They want gray. It is, I, you know, oh, like, oh, they like me. Kind it of. really does feel that way. Cause I mean, so many times in any environment and especially our line of work when we're, in the in the arts you just feel like you're gonna get forgotten the minute that you don't show up for something or you don't like totally bust ass you know and and it's like you think oh my god i miss one thing and i'm gonna be off the list forever and it's been a real learning experience shall i say to train myself into just focusing on what feels like the right thing to do and just trying to tune out all the noise, like try to tune out all of those doubts, try to tune out all of that hearsay and all these justifications that you've made for something that happened, et cetera. Cause it's just static. It's just distracting. And I feel like it really has actually distracted me for a long time. And maybe right now I'm ready to 
like I'm seeing sort of like the clouds part. So it's really, it's really cool to be here. And, and I especially want to thank you because I made just a, a, a note on my Twitter about it and kind of in a Twitter way poured my soul out in a series of tweets and no less than 30 seconds later, you're just Wendy's on my phone, like, great, come on our show. And I was like, yeah. man, this is an example of exactly what's right with the world is that people that love each other in real life, supporting each other and just having a good time. So it's just, I'm really touched that you asked me and I'm glad to be here and glad to meet everybody. Yay. Yeah, we, we, we love you so much in like our many years of uh, working together and you are one of the first people I met like in the industry where even before I met you, they're like, oh, you, you know, Gray Drake from Rotten Tomato, you know, Gray Drake from this and that. And, and she moderates panels and she's a host and she does interviews. And I was like, so I, I looked you up and I was like, oh, and like, to be completely honest, I, right before I met you in person was like super intimidated. And I was like, <laughs> little nobody just like breaking into this. I don't even know if you want to call it breaking into the industry, but I was literally brand new to this side of things. And cause I came out to LA for acting. So I was not expecting to do this this side of things of stuff. And I was just like, oh God, I don't know. She's gonna like, just who, who are you? Go away, you know? And then you were just like, hello, I'm great. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> people are nice. She's nice. And then ever since then, you and I have done, we've hosted shows together uh, for Focus Feature. You know that scene, season three. I think there's three, uh, two episodes. Oh God, three episodes uh, right now, no, right? No, I think you're right about it being two episodes released. Yes. <laughs> Something for you guys to look forward to. So it's just been <laughs> so fun to to getting to know you, to kind of uh, have our friendship. And um, I love supporting other people that I, I find absolutely amazing. So of course I was like, you wanna come on our show? <laughs> it was so cool. I, um, I realized that I was working so hard and I love my job so much that in essence, I was hiding a little bit. Like I was so busy building and so busy working um, to meet our predetermined corporate standards and our goals that I kind of had kept a part of myself from everyone on social. And so this is very new to me to be like actually interacting on social with, with people, to be actively asking for subscribing from people and their likes and their comments. And um, it's really vulnerable and I'm kind of a mess. Like I, your, your guys, well, right. And your even your volume of work and your dedication to this show is, is all is amazing. And I'm like, okay, so this is what I'm striving for. It's like being, being connected, being honest and just like, also I, weirdly, I've been doing this for a while for other people, but I'm not sure I know how to do it for myself. Yeah, that it's a, it's a little weird. It's a little intimidating. You're kind of, because you're so used to like, okay, well, I'm not on camera person, but then now you have to think about like, the the flow of the show and what do you want to talk about and 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 all this and that and you're just like one of the things what we did is is we kept on trying to make it like perfect before we even went live and then i kind of go back to something a friend's always said like if you keep waiting on something to be perfect from like what you picture in your head never to gonna yeah it's never going to happen because nothing is ever going to be perfect so just do it and then you can fine tune it from there. And I was just like, you know what? So we just kind of jumped in and we're like, let's just do it. And there's something that's so much easier to be like, well, when someone's telling me, oh, we want you to do this, we want you to do that. And then when you no longer have that and you're like, well, now I get to do what I want to do. What do I want to do? <laughs> right. <You're> like, <laughs> totally. Do I know? There's so many different ways to do this that now it's, it's hard to be able to be like, okay, no, no, this is what I like. This is where I want to go. Let's go. And, but finally be able to be freed from that. And once you actually start going down that path, then you're like, okay, I've got this rhythm, I've got this pace. And it's really cool to be able to have that freedom once again, to be able to explore you. And the only problem is, you know, is that when you work for yourself, your boss can be a real a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> just have like, a, like an internal conversation with yourself, <sighs> you know, your performance has really been subpar. <laughs> what do you mean it's subpar? I've been putting out. You know what? I quit. You can't quit. I'm you are fired. You. I'm sorry. But you know what? For that kind of, well, I'm going to have to write you up for this. 
a little bit of a reprimand. You take, you take the slip, duck your own pay, and fill out your I'm own. I'm sorry. Account. I swear it'll never happen again. Oh, please have mercy. I need this job. <laughs> and then you, you can be the boss and turn around your big chair. I'll give you one more chance. Don't screw it up. <laughs> I'll be on my best behavior. Oh my God. And then you could even expand the role play into being like the classic, like pol police detective chief, like the chief of detectives or whatever, the, whoever it is that I don't, cause I'm really bad with ranks. Um, whoever it is that goes like, give me your badge and gun, you're <laughs> reckless. Turning your weapon. Yeah. Turn totally. it on the table. <sighs> Long look to the camera and then you turn around, door closed behind you. And and to everybody in the comments, it's like, you're already being so nice. And this is what you can expect on my channel is just a lot of me, you know, pretending to be a police chief and calling them the wrong thing. So I've seen 800 movies where I should know that name and I don't. Oh my gosh. Well, um, I, there's a, like a ton more that I want to get into, but before we do, um, can you tell everybody where they can find you on YouTube so they can start checking out your channel and subscribing and liking? Yes, so please just Google my name and my channel is currently under my name. So you'll find a lot of ridiculous videos like I saw here in the comments uh, that saying, talking about my uh, Thor the Dark World interviews. By the way, totes love Hids, Hiddles, Tom Hiddleston, um, <laughs> who has officially agreed to let me call him Hiddles, although I think he regrets that decision. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um, you will, you'll see the, for now, you're going to be seeing a lot more movie interviews pop up on my channel under my name, which has a photo of me, which you guys use for your still uh, of like, just a carelessly tied tie. Yeah. You know, and just like a sassy look, that's my channel. And all my social channels are also just under my name, which as you can see on screen is G-R-A-E Drake. Yeah, not not the color gray, but G R A. <laughs> yeah, just to make it an SEO nightmare. <laughs> I wonder if people like who haven't met you before and they type like an email to you. No, I guess it wouldn't because you're they would they would have to look you up. But I wonder if they were maybe like just not thinking about it and they just write like G R E Y or G R A Y all the time. And really? I also it when people um also, because it's just the vowel combination, people's brains just want to put a C in there. So I get grace a lot. Oh. And I'm like, it's super ironic because I'm actually like pretty clumsy. <laughs> but I get it. <laughs> I can see that. I can see people type and be like, oh, she doesn't know her name. It's Grace. <laughs> it's Grace. It's not Grace. She doesn't know what right. she's talking about. It couldn't possibly be. I definitely know better because this is the internet. Yeah. <laughs> well, before we dive into all of our random topics today, which today we are talking about uh, just a really hilarious thing about Annabelle escaping the War Museum. We're talking about the DC fandom panel that's been revealed. The times have been revealed. We're super excited about that. And Sony Pictures possibly, well, probably are going to be screening movies on their own lot via a drive-in. But before we dive into all of that, since we're talking about your many, many celebrity interviews and encounters and how many times you've, I've seen you on the step and repeat and the red carpet, we have a question from one of our movie bunch from Stardew, and I totally lost the question. Hold on, I got it back. Nope. <laughs> All right, Stardew, and a lot of people may not know this about you. Um, I certainly do, because when I first researched you, and I was like, "Whoa, she's cool." So that, yeah, so I was like even more intimidated. I was like, "So she's really, really talented and really, really cool." Got it. <laughs> <laughs> approach carefully when I mean hello. Um, so this question is from Stardew who asks, what is your top three cosplay costume to dress up as? Oh my God, I love dressing up so much. Like I, I'm so surprised that like, uh, I've been able to turn my love of movies into a career. And I've also been able to do the same thing with dressing up. <laughs> Cause it's like, if you're, I'm totally willing to dress up for anything. I, I, um, so I've worn a lot of costumes. Um, I think my favorite costumes are the ones that really take me over and change my personality uh, because wearing it, I feel like everyone needs the complete experience. So, cause some cosplay is just fun and I, I'm just me wearing the costume, but Tinkerbell is- nope. 
just love Tinkerbell because let us never forget, Tinkerbell is psychotic. <laughs> So. No, yeah, she's she's a little neurotic. It's, it's, it's a great character. And as soon as you put on the costume, it's amazing how it just like takes over your personality. Totally. And so Tinkerbell is especially fun because she like actively lobbied for another girl's death when it seemed yep. like her boyfriend wanted to be with her. <laughs> and um, when, as a result, when I put Tinkerbell on, I just become like so obnoxious, but because I'm like a six foot tall lady dressed like a fairy, people are just think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just can do whatever I want. Um, yeah. And it's like with great power comes great responsibility. That is the truth because children, the, the costume, I'm so proud of it. And the costume is so realistic to the Disney version of Tinkerbell. So like detail oriented, mm -hmm. children actually think that I'm the real Tinkerbell. Oh, that's, that's the real. cutest ever. It is. And it really means I have to be careful how drunk I get when I'm wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to admit, a drunk Tinkerbell, that's that's looking for that's like that's gotta be just so much fun. Oh, Tinkerbell. it's the best. Play. With the little the little like pom poms on my tennis shoes and I'm running around and they're bouncing and then and it's like the the wings are so lethal, but I'm like, I'm <laughs> Hey, it's adorable and also maybe turn into um, um, the fairy from um, Scrooge with um, <laughs> yes, Carol Kane. <laughs> Carol Kane, a little bit. And she's oh. like hitting Bill Murray on the face with a toaster. <laughs> um, so I, well, and also, fun fact when I'm in Tinkerbell costume and I drink, I call her Drinkerbell. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We we met Drinkerbell. Mm -hmm. We were yeah. lucky to meet Drinkerbell yeah. once upon a time, and it was glorious. <laughs> um, similarly, a costume that changes my personality a little bit and just lets me be who I really want to be is the unicorn. Um, the unicorn is it's this amazing unicorn headdress and just a unicorn outfit that is very easy to wear as far as cosplay goes, and it absolutely turns me into a complete monster. Like <laughs> at, at San Diego Comic-Con, just like act one time I, I learned this on accident. There was a huge line that I didn't see and I walked right in front of everybody and somebody goes, hey, unicorn, there's a line. <laughs> and I turned and I, I was horrified internally, but externally what came out is Unicorns don't really buy into your concept of lines. <laughs> <laughs> what was their reaction? Do you remember? I, I do, absolutely. It was a beat, and then they just went, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will That's going to be a thing, you know. Yeah. And this one time at Comic-Con? Yeah. Absolutely. That's like my, I'm that person. I am like the Allison Hannigan of <laughs> cons. Um, I have to say, if it wasn't you, if it was anyone else being that unicorn but you, I don't think that would have been the response. I think it would have been <laughs> to the back of the line. But because it was that, you, probably that person would have been wearing a unicorn skin <laughs> on top of their normal Comic Con clothes. But yeah, I agree. I, I don't, I get away with a lot of things. And that's why I, get to call Tom Hiddleston Hiddles, you know? even though I'm sure that it feels like hot pokers in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and my last costume that I love, love, love for similar reasons is Xena. <gasps> That's gotta be oh. just a very empowering costume. A hundred percent. A warrior, you like just take on anything that's around you. It is, I love doing the call. I love being loud. I love like just being very dominant and like unapologetic about that. But also again, like I'm always coming from a place of humor, like trying to make people laugh. So it's, I think that is part of what I, why I get away with stuff. Cause people know it's like, I wasn't, I didn't actually get in front of anybody in the line. <laughs> I didn't, I made a mistake and then derailed after I made everyone laugh. <laughs> and with Xena, you know, getting to talk trash to people who like maybe have like a little bit to learn about being kind in large groups like Comic-Con. I'm into that. I pick yeah. up that 
she has a sword and she has that circle thingy and mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of attitude. So those are my faves. That's amazing. I don't think I've seen the, the Xena cosplay. Now I'm going to have to like look it up. That sounds amazing. Oh yeah. I, I just found an old video that I did at Comic-Con many moons ago where Nathan Fillion was on a Hall H panel for the movie Super. Our favorite. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, they, so it's like a superhero theme movie. And I went up to the microphone in Hall H and I just asked, I was like, Nathan Fillion, I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about your character in the film. And do you think that he is a suitable mate for the warrior princess? <laughs> oh my God, what a great question. <laughs> it's so perfect. And the answer was like, Yes, he is absolutely suitable. Yes. Yes. Nathan Fillion is one of those um, actors that you're just, you know, he has the right kind of um, comment for every question that is out there. He's so much fun just to watch and hang out, like hang out with. That's all you really want to do. It's kind of like, you just want to hang out with the guy. Um, Wendy totally. has a great story. Oh, they've heard uh, it before. I basically met him at the, I want to say it was the Rogue One premiere. Uh, and somebody had pointed him out to me because because he's like one of my favorites. And then so I got like very chicken and I was like, I want to meet him. I can't meet him. I want to meet him. I can't meet him. <laughs> of course, he hears me because we're literally right behind him. And by the way, he was standing next to Aisha Taylor. So or I was just like, oh, or Aisha Tyler. And I was like, I can't. Beautiful people. I can't go up there. So he hears me like mumbling my way about like wanting to meet him. And this is after they checked our <laughs> phone. So there was no photo evidence of this, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> and uh, he turns around. And he's like, well, hello. I'm Nathan. I'm like, <laughs> and he's like, and you are? And I'm like, uh, 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 and uh, the person next to me was, uh, her name is Wendy. I'm like, oh, God. And it's hilarious because, you know, I, I, I kind of tease her about it every now and again. But I know if I was in her situation, I would have had far less chill. I just would have been like. <laughs> <laughs> who's, your, who's your person, Dustin, that you would, that, that you would like lose it over? Who, who is that person to you? Um, Nathan Fillion is definitely one of them. Um, do you know who, uh, Matt Mercer from Critical Role? Oh, Matt Mercer from Critical Role. <laughs> I would be, oh my God, because I think he's an amazing storyteller. I love what he does on Critical Role. And I've heard that he's just the nicest guy. Oh God, that's awesome. I hope that happens for you someday. And that there's a lot of photographic evidence. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day, maybe it's a good thing we're in an age of social distance. So you can't, you can't close that six foot gap. So you have to freak out from six feet away with the mask on. Hi. So he would, they would just see this. Go say hi. hi. <laughs> and, and probably the hand would be like, just a blow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I love hearing about your top three cosplays. And we have a super chat from the movie Bunch, Chris. This is Chris's choice. And also before we Woo, dive into Chris's choice, we want to say happy birthday to Chris, whose birthday I believe was this past Monday. Yeah, it has to be this past Monday. So happy birthday to Chris. And also happy birthday to Debbie, whose birthday is tomorrow. If Woo. I had to push it about confetti poppers. Oh, <gasps> where, where are those? I think all of our confetti poppers, they we died. tried to use them a little while ago. And like we had like five of them and like four of them broke. During oh. the yeah, like they're really old. So they just crumbled and there was just like, oh my God. If crumbled. that isn't, that's a metaphor for 2020. <laughs> if I've ever heard one. Oh, hey, crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm sad now. And <laughs> now we have to vacuum it up. <laughs> so today Chris's choice is, and this is a question for everybody, of course, if the world was normal and social distancing was not a thing and money was no object, if you could be anything, what would you be for Halloween? Oh, Ooh. for the longest time, I know I always wanted like one of those, like a costume that has like those cool, like retractable wings. Um, from yeah. what was it? Um, um, ben Affleck and um, Matt Damon's characters from Dogma. You know, what, that was like the yeah. first time I was like, I want those. I want those wings. I would like to have some kind of costume that had just really cool like either like arc um archangel from x-men just so i can have that that really cool kind yeah. of um elaborate costume 
That's awesome. Wings are such a pain to wear, but it really helps you set like healthy physical boundaries. Yes. <laughs> so no one can cut it. So watch the wingspan. What about you, Gray? What do you think? Well, you know, I am always more moved to wear costumes of characters that I really love. And so I know that there are plenty of characters that have like a lot of flash, but um, I, I also, that motive combined with the fact that I really like to make costumes as sexually interesting as I can <laughs> and confusing <laughs> because gender is just a construct we're learning, right? Mm -hmm. um, I like, I, th I keep thinking that it would be really fun to do like a sexy Doc Brown, <laughs> right? Because here's the thing. This is my reasoning. One Halloween, my friends and I all went as political figures and I ended up as sexy Fidel Castro. <laughs> <laughs> was it a, like a random or you just, you could pick your own, whoever you wanted. You could pick your own. So I was with a Kim Jong-un, uh, a zombie JFK. I was sexy Fidel Castro. <laughs> and I really love like just how confusing it is. Like you're like, why did, well, why did she have to make Fidel sexy? Cause I also think it's hilarious that people get uptight about like sexy Halloween costumes. Right, 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 yeah. It's, it's like, Monday. it's one yeah. day. Yeah. Like Express the, yourself. That sexy John Oliver costume. Oh, that was our friend Pam. <laughs> yeah, Pam Horton, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh um, my God, that's brilliant. It's, I'll send you the picture after. It's actually, it's like spot on to from like the glasses to the swoopy hair to the tie. Spot on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've, I, I'd like to tackle a sexy Doc Brown with like just a completely normal Marty McFly. I think that that would be pretty great. Wow. That would be a lot That would of be fun. great. And because money is not an issue, you should like step out of... The, the DeLorean, yes. DeLorean. So I am also the Mandalorian. You can step <laughs> out of the Mandalorian. Oh my God, you just came up with a brilliant mashup though. You could do the Manda DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really, you can have like a flux capacitor on your chest. With the armor. Amazing, but like a flux capacitor, but like on a bra. <laughs> oh my God, amazing. Like, like, yeah. And instead of like the metal, uh, like the sh uh, the shoulder pauldrons, you have like those, the uh, the steam vents. Oh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh my God, incredible. That's, this is hilarious. Oh, oh now I wish we had a Halloween this year, you guys. I know. I'm not optimistic. We do like a fun Zoom and everybody can put on a, like a fashion show or something like that. That would be fun. We'll probably be dressed up. For a live stream, <laughs> I'm be laughing about this all day. <laughs> Never gonna think about it. You're just gonna like think about the Mandalorian, mm -hmm. the Mandalorian. And what's really, I mean, that's true. I've seen some really good gender bend costumes yeah. too. That I'm just like, Which I love. amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, what is it? Um, one day, when Wendy and I were gonna go to Dapper Day this year, and we wanted to do kind of a gender bend of some um, Disney characters. What were we gonna do? Um, there was a couple that we wanted to do. Oh, okay, I don't remember So, anymore. but I mean, one of them, we also wanted to go as like a Thor and Loki um, mix up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just some of these costumes that it's just so much fun to be like, how can I make this character that I love mm -hmm. a part of me now? Yeah. Which is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Every yeah. time it's like, exactly. how, how do you meld with the character? Why do you care? Why'd you wear the costume? And all of those things translate into the final product. I just love dressing up. It's so fun. I feel like there's so much joy in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially when it's, you know, you put some thought and imagination, creativity into that costume. And then when it comes together and it doesn't have to be professionally done, I've had, I have stuff that I just kind of cobble together at home. People are like, Oh, I really appreciate that. And it, people see it, you know, people see it. And I think you have more fun putting it together um, than saying going to like Ruby's costume and like, Here's a, and I know I've done that too. I've done that before. Sure. I wear, like, oh, costume in a bag because it's easy, it's quick. Um, not the cheapest, but it's quick. And and then you can kind of add your own flavor to it. And then that's when I think you kind of really make it your own. If people can't sew, like I, I have a sewing machine. Am I an expert seamstress? Absolutely not. My stitches are usually terrible. I just hide it really well under accessories. Um, and I think for me, I would, yeah, I would go like full gambit. Oh. My favorite X Men, so I want like the swoopy hair with the staff with the like the light up eyes and the light up cards. 
amazing. That would be incredible. Oh, then, like, so good. Someone to travel with me all the time with like a blow dryer or like a fan. <laughs> so my cape can always swoop behind me. That'll be where all the money goes. <laughs> like Beyonce moment me the whole time. Every time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Also, yeah. by the way, best job ever. I feel like a lot of people, even in the comments, would be excited to have that position. Like, whoa. Am I right, everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your job? I'm the fan holder. And I was reading some of the comments too. Um, some of one of some of the costumes that I've really loved when I've gone to Comic Con are like the mashups. You know, I've seen like a Darth Vader Hello Kitty version to where it was <laughs> pink and white, and he had this instead of the chest plate, he had like the Hello Kitty face. Someone mentioned, um, oh shoot, the oh, comments so I'll aren't go back, there. I'll go back. But it was, um, what is it, a um, Captain Marvel uh, She-Ra oh, and yeah. Ray oh. mashup. And that's like, brilliant. That's really, that's a cool idea. Yeah, that um, absolutely is. Yeah. How much creative, how many, how much creative juices can get flowing when you're like just taking your fandom and just like, I can take some of this, a little bit of that, and I've got something so cool. Finally, that's why. Not, go ahead, Barry. Sorry. Oh, I love I love Deadpool for that reason because the mm -hmm. the card the comic is such a mashup. Just that's his nature. So it's yeah. I I one time I, to do the interviews for that movie, I dressed up as Dead Maid. <sighs> so I had on a French maid costume, and then I put on like a Deadpool uh, apron, and then had ninja size with like feather dusters on. <laughs> <laughs> Did Ryan Reynolds see this? Um, yeah, and in fact, when I walked in the room, both he and TJ Miller like just shouted expletives and were like, oh my God, what is this? <laughs> that, I think we got that little stuffed animal, a stuffed doll of uh, dead, oh, uh, dead man. It was or ironically at the, at the, I think the only Rotten Tomato thing that I got to attend, not the panel, but it was like the party slash celebrations thing because you guys were launching that show at comic-con and there was like a little goodie box that we got and the little deadpool made person was was in there and yeah. i brought it home and then my dogs decided that they wanted it more than me and then they they they, they, they i don't even know what happened to it i think it got completely and utterly destroyed well it's, in, it's ingested like, <laughs> so Deadpool, Deadpool will now always be a part of our dogs. It became dead poop. It became dead poop. Dead poop. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys, welcome to our cosplay uh dead poop talk, everybody. <laughs> so much fun. Thank you so much, Chris, for your super chat today. And let's go ahead and dive into some of the super fun topics. So this one I found absolutely obscure, super random. And I was like, let's just break the ice with this one. Um, so there was a whole thing going around the internet saying that Annabelle, you guys know the evil doll from from the Warner Museum. Uh, if you didn't know about Annabelle, you know before beforehand, you know her from the movie Annabelle, from all the movies, all the horror movies uh, from The Conjuring, and the infamous doll apparently supposedly escaped the Warner Museum. So where I was like, wait, oh my God, really, 2020? This is, <laughs> however, not true. You do not have to add Evil Doll Escaped and is like in the wild running around ready to curse people to your 2020 bingo card. Um, this is a rumor and it originated, weirdly enough, from an interview that the actress Annabelle Wallace who she and she was in an interview talking about her experience on working with the mummy with Tom Cruise and talking about, you know, kind of doing these action filled scenes with him and running on the scene with him. But when the interview got translated to Chinese, the translation was Annabelle escaped. And then so that turned into a whole thing. So now the Internet was like, oh, my God, Annabelle escaped. In fact, it did not. But I thought it was going to be fun if we kind of speculated on thoughts. Mm -hmm on if Annabelle actually did escape or go missing from the Warren Museum. What would that uh, be for 2020? What do you guys think? Oh, God, just one more thing. It's like all of a sudden Annabelle would be riding on a chariot of murder hornets, you know, and she would just show, she would show up to people's door and tell them like that she had their stimulus check and then she'd be like, psych. <laughs> Worst time forever. And then the doll's just like inside your house forever. It pop, pop, pops out of the mailbox. <laughs> oh my Anna. god i couldn't if the news was real i don't think i could handle it i don't think i could handle it because dolls creep me out 
already. <laughs> like the porcelain type, not the not the little fuzzy like cutesy. Even though the real Annabelle is just a what is it like r raggedy, raggedy Ann? Yeah. yeah. So it's actually really cute in nature and not a doll that I would be afraid of at all. I'd be like, oh, cute little doll on the sidewalk. Put it somewhere, not at home, but like you know, just touch it and then I don't know, cursed forever. Yeah. Well, honestly, I don't even think I'd even get. I'd, I'd see if I saw that from a distance. I'd be like, nope, nope. Just hard, hard I'm going to take the long way home. I'm not even you, going near that thing. Oh, you man. seem like a. You seem like you have much deep wisdom within you, and that is one of the, those things because it's like you see a random doll. It's like you don't need it. You like don't. whatever it is, it doesn't. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be bad. Just let it go. Unless it's um, like toys on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> six 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 yeah, six. I I've seen mine. I've seen video of the Warrens uh room, like that of the museum. It is so fascinating. It is it should be I feel like it's it's such an interesting cultural study of like meaningful artifacts. Mm -hmm. Because it's stuff from everywhere. In the la latest Annabelle movie, when she comes home, yeah, um, <laughs> a lot of that stuff is directly modeled off of their real stuff. And the room is really similar to the real room. And now that both of the Warrens, uh, like Ed and Lorraine, have passed away, I actually had a conversation with my husband about, like, I was worried Cause I was like, I don't like what happens if like, maybe she doesn't get it blessed. Like what if she like lets the alarm lapse on her phone, <laughs> like, so, you know? Cause I, I feel like they were in charge of it for so long. Yeah. Like what's going to happen now? What if she decided to sell the house for God's sake? Oh, not enough that'd like sage. The, yeah. That'd be like the scariest yard sale ever. <laughs> It's just a bunch of like jack in the boxes. Yeah, a little like the monkey table <laughs> with, with the right. terrifying face. Right. Oh god, just that no. in front of everything, just like pile free. Take it. Um, I did actually. There was someone here that wanted to comment on the possibility of Annabelle escaping. Mm -hmm. She got really excited. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Gray oh Bell. My god. What did what did you have to say to Annabelle about escaping the Warrens Museum? She's saying, "Get it, girl! Hell yeah, <laughs> go, girl!" Uh huh. That's oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> it's like creepily awesome. Um, this is my Graybell doll from when I did interviews on my Ms. Movie Phone show for Annabelle Comes Home. And uh, Graybell was kind enough to do all the interviews for me. So it was like a really easy day at work. <laughs> that was really amazing. What were the interviewees like when they <laughs> had sat down with a doll? <laughs> um, they were varying degrees of upset. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I would I would walk in and be a little afraid, but like, I would appreciate the effort. And of course, if you guys want to see all these fun interviews, and there's so many of them with Gray, and you, you can watch her call Tom Hiddleston Hiddles, you can watch her interview with Gray Bell, all of it on Gray Drake's uh, YouTube channel. Just type in Gray Drake in the search bar on YouTube, and you will find it, and subscribe it, and like it. There's so many videos. <laughs> Featured a whole some of them. <laughs> okay. She says that she needs to go get a whiskey, neat. So I'm just gonna let her do that. You can, dr oh my God, for Graybell for Halloween, she can be great, great Tinkerbell. Oh, how would I? <laughs> oh. Tinker Gray. Tinker Gray, Tinker Gray. I like it. Put a little I like it, it's out. layers upon layers. Yeah, that would be amazing. Oh my gosh, what a fun topic! Who knew? Um, <laughs> before we dive our next topic, uh, we're gonna get to a couple of super chats. This one's from Justin. Thank you so much, Ooh. Wendy, Dustin, and Gray. What are your favorite movies that were panned when they first came out? Ooh, God, so I like movies that are terrible in general, oh. like so bad they're good. So uh, the majority of my favorite movies are panned, not just when they first came out. Generally, always. Would you call Josie and the Pussycats panned? I I would. Because I, I, I was think, obsessed. I think that it was relatively, It I think it was, my, my memory of it is that it was it received okay by critics. 
Um, and then audiences generally completely ignored it. Um, it. But now it's like such a big cult film and actually an appearance by Mr. Movie Phone, the original in really? that movie. Oh yes. Yeah. That's Oh yeah. Oh my god, yeah. I I had that movie when Blockbuster was a thing and I remember buying it because I liked it so much on VHS. It's a good movie and it holds up and I love it and Parker Posey is in it. Yeah. Checking checking right now just to see like what what was the critical reaction to it? I Ooh. wonder. I wonder. And if they re-released it now, I think it'd be a whole different story because that was just like, I mean, Alan Cummings was in it, mm -hmm. Rosario Dawson's in it. That makes sense to me. So according to Rotten Tomatoes, um, when it came out, it was like a 50-50 split. Mm -hmm. It was a, it's a 53% it's a rotten, which generally just means that one out of every two people was smart and loved it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any movies? That you can uh, think of. That's always really tough because you know, for the longest time, I really didn't care what like people said about the movie. I just went to go see whatever movie I wanted. So I never really knew which ones were being bashed until I actually had seen it, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but what wouldn't I mean, would technically Princess Bride kind of fall under that? because uh, when it first came out, it didn't do very well. But Interesting. It, I mean, and I didn't see it until after it came out on VHS. Well, so we can say yes for the sake of this conversation because it wasn't really a cultural phenomenon until later on. Until it felt, until it came out on DVD. I mean, not DVD, VHS. That's very true. But uh, again, but according to the Tomato Meter, uh, it's tough because there have been like lots of re-releases yeah. and lots of special screenings, and that generally affects the Tomato Meter more positively. Mm -hmm. um, because uh -huh. people review it, but in the current context, right? So um, having said all that, it is 97% certified fresh, which, so it's high. Yeah. But I don't think that it would have been that high when it first came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I know they had the hardest time trying to sell that movie because they were trying to push like it's, it's an everything movie. And back then people are like, what? Um, no, I, a certain category. I just got so excited because D train brought up the, the happening was a riot to watch. Um, I just got so deeply excited. It's like one of my favorite terrible movies. Um, That's the one with, with am I Shyamalan? Mark, uh -huh. with Mark, yeah. Okay. Got it. And the it is Mark Wahlberg and the air is our enemy. And it was so weirdly executed, but it has the greatest opening like 10 minutes ever that yeah. the rest of the movie never delivers on like it, <laughs> <laughs> but there is one part and I will, I will, I love talking about this part where they're in Betty Buckley's house and she's like a crazy lady and it's him and Zoe Deschanel and the young child. And so the, he and Zoe Deschanel are like having this hushed conversation about like, she's, she's definitely crazy, right? Like we have to get out of here. Mm -hmm. And she, Betty Buckley comes in, the great stage actress, Betty Buckley. Okay. And she just goes, what are you talking about? You're gonna murder me. And Mark Wahlberg in my favorite moment in cinema turns <laughs> with this face and he just goes, what? No. <laughs> A hundred percent like someone who's definitely going to murder her. <laughs> oh, oh my not being very convincing. <laughs> Gifts exist of it. It is so funny. Really? It is, I have tweeted Betty Buckley too many times about it. And I'm just like, just a reminder that this is one of the greatest moments on screen ever that's seriously amazing well you guys those are our movie picks for movies that you know we love even though when they came out they were panned um and a couple of other um movies coming from the chat let's see oh boy i lost them uh teenage mutant ninja turtles uh Ooh, which, that's a good one maybe probably one? maybe the first one well because probably. they made a second and third one so no, that means that audiences loved it because it's super cool. But I would assume that critics would not be a big fan of that film. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I'm then I'd vote for that one too because I loved that movie when it came out. Yeah. Absolutely. Which one is the one with Vanilla Ice? Is that two or is it later? Okay. I forgot the about secret that. of the ooze, ninja, ninja, 
Rap. Go ahead. One time Vanilla Ice called me his pink ninja and I died. Died. Are they making a documentary about Vanilla Ice? Something's or going on with him. Something's going on with that. And I'm like, this might be a little interesting to watch. I would tune in for that. Yeah, he's an interesting dude. Um, I karaoke yeah. with him one night. <laughs> and it is it is a night. He, My dad and I, were we drank so much with Vanilla Ice that we came down into the kitchen the next morning. We're both wearing sunglasses. He has to take me to the airport. And it, he, we both just sat there in silence. And finally, I was like, what did Vanilla Ice do to us? <laughs> <laughs> we karaoke with him. That would make a great story time video on your channel. Not a actually, yeah, you because there's there was a lot to that night. Trust me, a lot. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh! To see if you subscribe to the channel, you you may or may not see a story time video. Can't guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> but subscribe hmm. anyways. Um, and also a super chat from D Train who writes, When is Screaming Core come back to the Schmodown? D Train, I have zero idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am part I'm I'm proud of my faction. We're tearing it up and uh it's, it's sort of what's that? Finn yeah. stock exchange. Oh, no. Yeah, no. uh-huh. I have um, a, like a love hate with with Finstock. Oh God, join the I, club, right? Isn't I, that like- I, I, I'm so intrigued, but at the same time, I'm so annoyed. And and uh, Finstock, I'm not sure knows that, but Tom definitely knows that. <laughs> I love that if I've gone a while since like being around everyone in the past, not not in the recent past, but there was a there was occasion where I'd come into the Schmo, the, the Schmo studio and just be like, what are we calling Tom today? Like, I don't know, what is, who is he today? It depends. You know, I'm really terrible. Like I really should be more respectful for, for to like, you know, him being Finstock. But sometimes I just get annoyed that I'm just like, hi, Tom, how are you? <laughs> Uh -huh. and I think Tom is the nicest person. Every time he ever came, he's like, Wendy, how can I help you? And he would like, help me take all the trash and recyclables. And I'm just like, I'm such a jerk. <laughs> and then he turns into Finstock and you're like, oh, my feelings were justified. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it's a real yes. roller coaster of emotions. Yes, <laughs> that's true. He's always um, with me. I am. I'm. I'm excited to return on it. It's. It's all just a matter of figuring out the schedule because they've been, as usual, the schmo community is like so great, and they're just always pivoting and figuring out how to best provide entertainment. And so now that they've kind of got that up and running. You might see me soon. Oh, intrigue. Very exciting. Hope that answers your question, D-Train. Thank you so much for your super chat. And I know we're running super short on time. I don't want to keep you, Gray, too much longer past this. So we'll glaze over this next topic just a little bit because I do want to hear your take on it. And then we're going to dive into the DC fandom and our anticipation for it. But let's talk about um, Sony Pictures. Um, they are... You know, after the cinemas shut down because of the pandemic, Sony announced on Twitter that they are going to be hosting drive-in screenings on their studio lot. And in fact, they are doing that this weekend with titles such as uh, Karate Kid, Ghostbusters, Men in Black. And this obviously takes place on their lot in the Thur Thalberg parking lot. Not sure if I ever parked in that one because I've only been to Sony like a handful of times. But their outdoor theater is going to host like approximately 75 cars. It's about uh, $30 per car. And you can purchase the tickets from Adam Tickets. And also their movie, uh, The Broken Heart Gallery, is also going to get the drive-in treatment. So Gray, do you think that this new trend that's kind of kicking off, Sony's the first one to do it out of all the studio lots, I believe. Um, do you think other studios will now see this, see the success of it and follow suit? I definitely do. I think that drive-ins are the only safe way that we can watch movies right now. And much to Christopher Nolan's chagrin, <laughs> um, this is the way it's going to be. And yeah. and I don't actually think that there are many. Um, can I say something kind of a that's a bummer, guys? I don't think we're going to get big movies in theaters in the rest of 2020. Oh, but no. Ten? You mean in the U.S.? Yeah. Or, yeah. And so. I think that every studio is going to have to figure out which ones they can afford to release on VOD. And in the meantime, if they are willing to let a movie go to a drive-in, everybody's going to have to do that. I couldn't be happier. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm really surprised that it's taken this long for people to be like, hey, let's just do drive-ins. Bring it back. I mean, back. I remember going to a couple drive-ins with my family and I think it's a great experience, you know? And I just, I, I, I really, I was really sad to start seeing all of these drive-in theaters around me starting to shut down, being torn up for yeah. put up apartment buildings. And I'm like, no. And now that they're starting to come back, I'm kind of like, I can't wait to go to one. Yeah. Totally. It's a, it's a whole different experience. And I think it's going to really like help, like cure everybody's Jones for the movies. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, I, I haven't been yet and I'll t <laughs> I have a stupid reason for not going. <laughs> it's We're because the ba I use the bathroom a lot. Oh, oh, how would that work? You'd have to get out of your car and just like, did, 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 did. or are they, are they not doing bathrooms because of COVID? They, they have to. Oh, that's um, true. They have to. And, yeah. and, but it is literally just me like getting the confidence to be comfortable going and using it. And that sounds so weird. I won't dive into that anymore, but it's just, <laughs> that's where I'm at. So subscribe to me at Great Trade. <laughs> I have to say cans of Lysol with you. And every time you go in, you're just like, do, yeah, just double fist Everywhere. the the, the lights off can when you go into. Hopefully, it's not a porta potty. Hopefully, hopefully it's one of those like really nice star wagon built one with a little step, and you have like individual stalls and a little step on sink, and you can just you know yes. scrub up. Yes, yeah, exactly. Just full hazmat suit. Like I'm going, up. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm jumping in. You put it on, zip up, go to the bathroom. Sure. Back. For anybody that is less worried about the bathroom situation, though, I think you should definitely, if you're in the LA area, you should definitely go to Sony because the Thalberg lot is, it, there's a pretty fake rainbow in it. I think that that's the lot. Okay. And it's, um, it's, it's going to be a great place to watch all those great Sony movies. I love it. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, the last time I went on the Sony lot, I want to say it was for Little Women. Ooh. I think that's how long ago it was. <laughs> wow, yeah. Well, and it, they don't usually screen on their own lot. The the yeah, they they don't do a lot of screenings and for everybody that doesn't know, uh they give you different lots to park in based on what time of day it is. And so if you go to night screenings when they do have them at Sony, sometimes you're lucky enough to park in Thalberg, which is close to where <laughs> you're going. Otherwise, you have to walk across the entire lot and get lost because it's hard to navigate there. They give you the map of the security gate. All right, so what you'll do here is at that stop sign, you're gonna take a left and then you're gonna go about three, three, three stages over. You know where this is? You're gonna park in lot B. And then after that, you're gonna walk through a bunch of trees and this path that curves around, you're gonna go up the stairs to screening room five. <laughs> I, I, I always say to them, you have such a kind soul, don't bother. It's <laughs> fine, it's fine. <laughs> I'll find it. It's fine. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll in ten minutes after the movie starts. It's yeah, fine. I think we had I know. to do that for uh, Shape of Water. We had to park in the farthest lot oh, away from the where the screening was. It Fox or was, was it that Fox? That would be that was Fox oh. Searchlight, and I. Oh. They, I remember but, the screening I went to. Yeah, it was in the the one I went to. Also, was at the Little Theater, which is very little and does no good markings. Same thing. You're journeying. It <laughs> takes forever. We walked past it because the person happened with the clipboard happened to not be outside. And then we came all the way back. She's like, hello, it's here. And I'm like, where's your sandwich board that says screenings are here? God, I miss it. I miss going to screenings and I miss seeing you guys at screenings so much. I know. And what's funny about the going to those screenings too, by the way, for everybody that, that doesn't know is that you're so excited to be on a lot and it's so magical. And it's like, you see all this cool stuff everywhere, but you're frantically trying to get somewhere on time and you don't want people to be mean to you. So they keep inviting you to screen. <laughs> <laughs> don't litter, don't do anything stupid. Stop taking selfies. <laughs> There's a lot going on in our jobs, you guys. There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot. And also thank you to Dark Faith 66 for your super chat. Yes, we need you back in the Schmodown. You are a part of the family, Gray. Oh, thank you so much. I I, I think that it, my my return is imminent. Again, it's just because everybody's been ironing out how this works and keeping yep. eyes on the schmo down and all that. But I'm I'm definitely Finstock Exchange. Yeah, Finstock. The first time ever I cheered for Finstock. I used to only yell because there was like the lion's den thing, and Grace was a part of that. I used to be like. <laughs> Nobody would ever ever hear this uh, on camera because the mic I was too far away from her to ever pick up. But I was when Grace would enter, I would always say, uh, "I'm only here for Grace," because I didn't I didn't enjoy that faction. But I, I I was there because she was in, and I was like, "Yeah, Grace." 
nobody else would ever hear me. I would try to get up next to the mic and then production crew would be like, sit down. I'm like, would be and be what, what's that, Graybell? She says, <laughs> way to stick it to them, Wendy. Good job. <laughs> so we just have a few minutes left um, and I don't want to keep great for too much longer past the time I told her we were going to keep her so <laughs> dive into the DC fandom panel that's been revealed and you can of course uh, go to the DC fandom uh, website or their Twitter and you can kind of build your own schedule and all the times that they listed are in Eastern standard daylight saving time yeah because we're still having fall back yet so just make sure you make that time change in your head which means on the 22nd we're gonna have to be up and early but uh some of the schedules that they've revealed that are come that they're gonna do a panel for wonder woman 1984 flash the suicide squad of course the Zack snyder cut for justice league black adam aquaman shazam the batman and other panels include the Suicide, Squ Suicide Squad, Rocksteady Game Reveal, The Flash Season 7, Doom Patrol, Titans, Stargirl, Batwoman, very excited about that, and the Harley Quinn animated series, Grey. Which one of these panel has you most excited for? I'm so pumped about Wonder Woman 1984. I just love Wonder Woman. I'm so excited to see, yes, yes. Um, I'm really, really excited to see like what this movie has in store for us. I am dying that it keeps getting delayed like this. <laughs> oh, that's my number one, but also, I'm way late to the Doom Patrol party. Way late. Love Doom Patrol. Yeah. Our friend Ethan's actually in it as the... As was the guy with the, the nail. Oh, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's our friend, our friend Ethan. And I actually yeah. have auditioned twice for that show. Just for like, just little, little... They were just pre-call. So like, no, no, not, not, not... I mean, it's a big deal to get a pre-call. But it's yeah. also, you know, I didn't get, get past like, you know, like producer's call or director call, but it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, so, and that was pre pandemic. So I don't know what the plan is for that now, but it was, the sides are like super, super fun. Yeah. I love that. That's so cool. Do you get to do, did you do like any kind of like physical stuff in there? I, mm -hmm. I mean, one you was, pretend to shove somebody? I don't know. <laughs> one I had to talk to, who was it that I talked to? It was the, uh, who's the metal guy? Oh, Brendan Fraser, the Brendan yeah. Fraser yes, I was talking to his character, and I and 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 uh, I was I I was reading for like a lab person that's analyzing. Ooh. Yeah, so it was just just me not even treating him like any sort of like there's no empathy. It was just like science and facts, the only thing that mattered, and it was it was a lot of fun to play with. Oh, that's hot. That's like way yeah. hot. I love that. That's like you you could totally play that smart lab lady. I had the glasses on a clipboard, and I was like. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you were tough. I stopped you with a magnet. Uh, ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's campaign I, to get Wendy on Doom Patrol. Go ahead. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would a hundred percent love. And I texted my friend immediately as soon as I got the notice, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" She's like, "Oh my gosh! Good luck." Um, it would, it would have been fun, but you know what? I'm, I'm happy for the opportunities I got, and I just fingers crossed for more. And I think. I mean, I'm literally don't know how to build my schedule because I think I think Wonder Woman and um, I would say Wonder Woman, Batman and uh, the Snyder Cut are the top three for me. But I want to tune in for every single one of these panels. And I don't know how I'm going to do that because I think some of them overlap. Well, I'm hoping that they kind of do it the way that um, San Diego Comic-Con did to where they're already pre-recorded. So if you want, you can go back and watch them. Mm -hmm. So if there's like a panel that you're like, oh, I want to see this one and this one, but you can't see them at the same time, you can just watch one and then the other. That's That was one of the things that I really liked because when you go to Comic-Con normally, you have to pick and choose. But this one, you just get to see, I can watch all of them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that's going to be a real revolution in conventions. Yeah. That if they can figure out like the licensing and the, the timing of things, you can actually start to expand your own fandom and go to panels that you wouldn't have been able to make it to. And I would be so surprised if DC doesn't let fans do that because they really stack the deck. So they should be ready for everyone to want to see everything. Yeah. yeah. And if, because this is like a 24 hour period, like... <laughs> Just it's it'll be like a Comic Con, but like condensed in one day. Just don't plan to sleep at all, and just as soon as they start, just start watching it over like and then, and then hopefully <laughs> you, can, you can catch every single one that you want to. Otherwise, we're gonna have to like do a pros and cons, not a pros and cons, but like a priority list on how we're gonna do it because 
that's a lot of information to kind of absorb in one yeah. day. And I'm just hoping yeah. because one of the panels that I really want to see is the Black Adam one, just because Dwayne, hopefully Dwayne Dorok Johnson is going to be there. I don't see how they could do a panel without him yeah. kind of a thing. So exactly. a couple of panels with him and he, oh, he's such a showman yeah. and he's so much fun just to watch whatever yeah. he's doing. So, and I want to know more about this character. The fact that we knew more about Black Adam before Shazam even came out <laughs> kind of a true. thing. Yeah, and that's true. That character perfectly. So I'm just excited to see it. Yeah. All of them. I mean, the Batman. Always, Dwayne, Dwayne, always, Dwayne Johnson always gives you what you need every time. Like as a fan, yep. as a journalist, like every time. He's incredible. Oh, Go man. ahead. I interrupted. Oh, yeah. good. I'm so happy to hear. I think I'd be intimidated to uh, to interview him just because he's got that presence, you know? I think I think a lot of people walk into the room that way and they're just like, oh my God. But then he is so warm and welcoming, especially if he's with Kevin Hart, which he usually has been in the recent past. And then just the two of them, you just feel like you can hear like the the calliope music when you walk in where it's like, boop, 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 and they're like, hey. Have you, gotten a well, have you gotten a chance to um, interview Dwayne? Oh Many yeah. Times. Many times, oh, right? Yeah. Yes, one awesome. time, one time um, to celebrate Hercules, um, where he had a mag his character had a magnificent lion skin on his head. Um, instead, I wore an owl and he wore a panda. And then we did an interview in funny hats. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have also been a unicorn. Yeah. Uh, when interviewing him, um, I was I've talked to him. God, I've talked to him all over the country. We talked in Hawaii. Yes. Oh, his yeah. mom <laughs> is so nice. His mom carries around a booklet of his baby photos. And she likes, <laughs> she's such a sweetheart and she likes to sit down with all the journalists and like show them d the rocks like baby pictures. She's the best. That's the cutest thing ever. This I is love baby that. rock. This is baby <laughs> rock. Yeah, he, when he was a little pedal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, great. I know we're 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 running a little behind, so we're just gonna do this very last question, and we're gonna let you go because uh, D Train has another super chat for everybody. Should they? And I really want to hear your thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. Should they postpone the Oscars? Oh no, there's another one. Okay, wait. I'm just gonna. No, put that's this up. okay. I I'm totally good. I'm having a blast, and I yeah. Oh, thank thank you. you so much. I was like, oh, I told her one hour. We're at one hour and six minutes. Um, thank you so much for Jin Yu for your super chat. Great show. I can't watch because I'm all lawn mowing, but listening. Oh. Thank you so much. And of course, this is um, going to stay up on our channel so you can uh, listen and watch whenever you want. Jin Yu, you missed a spot. Jin <laughs> <laughs> Go over it again. Oh, my God. I, I, if I ever mowed a lawn, I would be fired from that job immediately. Because <laughs> like zigzags all over the place. Yeah. A random spot here. One spot that's like, you know, how the mower sometimes is lowered too much and you just get oh. like, a bold spot basically all over the place <laughs> um but d trains super fun question should they postpone the oscars and just combine the movies from 2020 and 2021 for the next oscars that it's a that's a fantastic idea and i think that the oscars has a lot of work to do um because it is symbolic, I think, of something our whole world is going through, which is that we need to reevaluate almost everything we've been doing, you know, and, and we we're playing by a new set of rules now. And certainly uh, with only there's only what, four months, four and a half months left of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't think that there's going to be an awards season this year either. And so I think your idea is great, D train, because the the only problem standing in the way just always trace it back to money and those organizations the emmys the oscars the golden globes so the sag awards they need the money yeah they need the revenue and so chances are we're going to get an altered show with less options for categories so it's like as it stands right now like elizabeth moss for best actress in invisible man done <laughs> that's it yeah she's it that's it <laughs> and they don't take uh, say we'll use tenet as an example right because tenet probably won't get released in theaters in the u.s but will it still count because they're going to premiere overseas in the theater like would they still no. be for oscars no 
That's Has not, that pay. doesn't make it eligible. Um, ah. So it, there's different rules because if you're, if you're premier, there's now I'm far from an expert on the very complicated Academy rules, but ultimately when you've got like a domestic film, it has to open domestically for a week in New York or LA. Um, and so they could easily do that. But the problem is that they, Warner Brothers and Christopher Nolan would never let their movie be anything less than a major release. Because clearly, I think, I think the problem is, is that Christopher Nolan at this point is like, Tenet is the savior of cinema. And now he can't really backpedal. Right, right, yeah. And it is it is the kind of movie that I personally would not want to see on like, if I didn't have a TV at home, right? Because some people, you, you just, TVs are expensive. So let's just say you don't have a TV at home, you can only watch on like a 13 inch laptop. Like that's not the way I would want to personally absorb that movie. I want the surround like Dolby Atmos sound and the, and the screen and you know, I don't necessarily need to be like in a theater with people, but I want that that experience, that well-rounded experience. So yeah, Chris I mean- Nolan is not gonna let it happen. No. So I think that is something that the Oscars kind of needs to do. I mean, they need that year to kind of recover from the shenanigans of 2020, so to speak. And I mean, I guess maybe yeah. they could probably do something near the end of um, 2021 or like somewhere in the middle and then do another Oscars. But I mean, but that would be kind of weird. I'm, yeah. I'm doing the math because uh, I, so they're scheduled right now for April, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think they're gonna have a really hard time with ha having anything to nominate, honestly. Yeah. But yeah. what what they're gonna be watching for is, is the success of the Emmys. Because the Emmys have already said yeah. that they are going to be a virtual experience and it's gonna air as usual. And they have plenty of stuff to talk about, of course. Oh, um, yeah. But they're, they're gonna watch and see like how much the revenue from the Emmys took a hit. Um, and they'll make their decisions, I think, in part because of what, what that will happen then. So we'll, yeah. we'll have to wait until September, but we'll probably be hearing more about it once they figure out like, did this decimate them financially? <laughs> Maybe we'll wait. And, yeah. you know, and that kind of makes sense. You first want to have someone else take the risk and dive in. Kind of like how everyone was kind of pushing for that. Hey, okay, which movie's going to go to VOD first? What movie's going to do this first? And then everyone else is like, okay, we're going to go. No, we're going to take a step back. Yeah. Right. And it, it's, so it's really like, uh, there's a lot to consider and I'm not, I don't have the most optimistic view of it. I think D train has it right that they should definitely wait till 2021, but because of that money makes the world go round. I don't think they'll do anything sensible except keep people out of the Kodak theater because even next year, that probably won't be very safe. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It's a really a wake up every day and see how, how things are happening. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Just, and I hope I'm wrong about everything I've said. Me too, because I want things to kind of like not be like this anymore. <laughs> I'm tired. God, everybody's. Yeah. We all agree with you. And, um, I totally forgot that we had a, a question from Movie Bunch from Discord who sent it in last night. So I have to ask this. And since we kind of talked about BVOD, um, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about this really quickly and then we're going to end the stream. Um, this one comes from Jack Robbins who writes, since Mulan is releasing as a premiere offer on Disney Plus, do you think Black Widow would follow and would you want it on Disney Plus or would you rather see it in theaters? Great. 100% would see in theaters and 100% uh, will be released on Disney Plus PVOD. You know? Yep. Yeah. First thing I thought when, when they, when they put Mulan up there, and just did the thing I didn't think they would do and are charging $30 for it. Um, I think what they're doing in essence is that this is like an era of training the consumer to yeah. pay extra for their films. Yeah. And I'm, I mean extra in the respect that they already have paid for a subscription. So now they're gonna pay on top of that for certain services. And mm -hmm. I can't wait to see how Mulan does. I, I do, want to bring up a point that I found on Twitter that I think is a good one and I hope it is wrong. They are only doing this to films 
that are led by women or any people of color. Oh, I hope you're, I hope that point that you found on Twitter is wrong as well. Cause that me doesn't, too. that doesn't sit well with me at all. Um, no. And you know what the problem is, is that every studio has a roster of movies and they know exactly how much they were projected to make. They right. drew a line and every movie that's underneath the revenue that they've decided they're going to release on demand. So what, who that hurts would be movies with women in them led by people of color, either one of those models. And so it, unfortunately it's like a chicken or the egg thing. And I, I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of that. I think Wonder Woman might suffer the same fate. No! Oh. Oh. <laughs> My that heart a bleeds point, a little though. bit every time I, I see a movie that I really wanna see in theaters, um, get the treatment of, you know, VOD, PVOD, whatever it may be. And maybe now studios are gonna go the ways of Mulan. And that's the first, literally the first tentpole title that we've seen do this. When I saw it, I had like mixed emotion. I was shocked. I was kind of like, I kind of understand, but the price tag still, I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm gonna pay it to watch it because I want him to see it. But I'm still like, ooh, not everybody's gonna like wanna pay. There's, there's 6.99 plus the third, the 29.99, you know? Yeah, that's tough because in my house it's just my husband and me. So thirty bucks, like we have to. Yeah, we really have to think about it. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. and one thing that I well, when I first heard this too, I was kind of like, what? And then it took me a second. I was kind of like, you know, after I heard recently that was it Disney's quarterly earnings, they lost like four billion dollars. With a part of me is kind of going, okay, well they're probably getting to the point to where like, guys, we need money we have all of these products, all of these things that we were expecting to be able to make money off of, mm -hmm. and they're just sitting here. Mm -hmm. We need to get some of these products out just so we can bring in some revenue. Mm -hmm. Have you guys heard that some studios are selling their movies? <gasps> so some studios have made deals to sell their movies directly to streaming. So what, what, what we're really seeing is that 2020, a horrible year for us personally, in so many ways, is going to be great news for the streamers that were already gaining a lot of momentum in the marketplace. So um, the studios are struggling that much that they're seeding to streaming just so they can stay running. It's a, it's pretty terrifying. Yikes. Wow. I mean, also like shocked, but also like, I'm not surprised. Yeah, They've got to do something because yeah. they haven't been able to release anything because they, again, it's like their whole accounting department is doing all these calculations. What makes the most sense? Is it selling it? Is it releasing it on demand? Is it hanging on to it? And mm -hmm. it's, it's such a weird conversation. And I, it, this 2020 was already supposed to be a really big year for streaming as far as the markets were concerned. And they nobody had any idea just how big it actually will be. Yeah. yeah. And I'm also well, I'm also kind of hoping that it kind of breaks up like the monopolies a little bit of studios. And maybe we'll start being able to get a little bit more um different properties from different things. People start making instead of having these huge, I mean, only like what four big studios mm -hmm. kind of a thing, you know, maybe we'll start getting a little bit more independent stuff, a little bit more because they start needing more this outlet of streaming will make it so it's a little bit more possible for some of these smaller things to thrive. Yeah. I think your positivity is one of your best attributes. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're over here like <laughs> doom and gloom. <laughs> I know I, every, every yeah. time that I read the news about it, I'm like, Ooh, because mm -hmm. I feel like in times of great economic crisis, what you end up with is more monopolies yeah. um, emerging from it, but um, that it won't be that way forever. Yeah. That's the thing. And I mean, that's, that's what's interesting about like being a conscious consumer is that everyone really needs to pay attention. Like IFC this summer has been releasing so many great things and you could go to a drive-in you can order it on demand and, and supporting those smaller people is exactly how we avoid what you just said. Yep. So it's our job, you know, as people within the movie community to spread the word. Cause it's like, yeah. go watch Dave Franco's The Rental and yeah. you know, all that, all that really good stuff that's done by smaller people. Exactly. And with that said, you guys, that comes to the end of our uh, much extended uh, live stream today. Thank you so much to you, Gray. 
for joining us today. You guys, make sure you check out Gray. Oh, kisses! Oh. Uh, make sure you check out Gray on her YouTube channel as well as her as well as her social media. When you just follow her right there, Gray Drake, G R A E Drake, not the color. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. And thank you to everybody in the comments. Jack, I see you over there. Um, and I really hope to be in the Schmodown soon. I'm excited about giving you guys good content. And Wendy, you've given me an amazing idea to just tell stories about yeah. all the ridiculous things that have happened to me. <laughs> and it was so exciting to be here. This has brightened my day. Coming. Thank you so much, you guys, for hanging out. Thank you, Gray, for uh, donating your time to us. And you guys, we will see you on the next live stream.